Michael, uh, we spoke, I spoke to you what, about a week or so ago and you, we talked about very much the way you want to play football. Mm. Your team have done that today. Mm. You've had a clean sheet, two goals and a win. Mm. And a real, feels like a sort of reset for the season. Hopefully. We're not getting too carried away. Obviously, we've got a massive game on, on, on Tuesday against a, obviously a top, top side. But listen, we knew that if we were going to win the game today, we'd have to play really well. I thought first half especially, yeah, I thought we were outstanding. Um, we had to deal with... Um, Disappointment again in terms of Lewis going off and had to sort of reshuffle, uh, but they didn't allow it to, to to bother us too much. But yeah, I, I just thought everything that I'd want from us and expect from us to be competitive, we had today. It was a real pace, I thought, and, and sharpness to the passing of your team. There was, and look, the reality is, Michael, we, you know, we, we've got Anthony Scully back on the pitch, who's our top scorer, and he scores the goal today. We've got real quality on the other side in Morgan Whitaker, who shows the reason why we tried to sign him in August and we didn't happen in August and we didn't bring two or three more in August. So, you know, as coaches, as managers, you can improve the players five, ten percent in terms of how you want to play and the re how, you, you know, how you set yourself up. But ultimately, it comes down to players and I think we had some decent players on the pitch today and they've, they've proved the point. Um, ironically, maybe it's not great for Lewis Monsma, but it, it proved ultimately perhaps to be a, a, a moment that changed the game in some ways. So I'll come to that in a second. But first of all, more importantly, how is Lewis? What's the situation with him? Yeah, it's difficult to tell. He's got a brace on his knee at the minute. Obviously, he felt some at pop, which obviously is never a good sign. Um, clearly, we're going to let the knee settle down for a couple of days before we get it scanned to get a true reading of what's going on. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm fearing the worst on it, if I'm being honest, in terms of. You know, I don't think it's a couple of weeks, you know, with a bit of luck, maybe it's only four, six, eight weeks or whatever, and that would be a right result at this moment in time. But um, yeah, it's a shame because he was playing ever so well. And uh, as you said to me before the game, it's a problem with your, your club captain as well there. Mm. You know, that black cat's causing problems. <laughs> it certainly is, it certainly is. Um, listen, we've been able to deal with it today. Does it mean that we're going to be able to deal with it going forward? So, you know, I think... Yeah, we have to we have to think smart and work smart over the next couple of days because uh, we definitely need reinforcements in that area. You know, I think obviously you've got Regan Poole and who was outstanding today, um, and obviously TJ having to move very very quickly. So we've had to ask Bish to play in two or three positions again, and he's done that manfully. He did really well, but it meant the change meant you pushed Fiorini perhaps a little bit further forward, and mm. he was involved in creating both the goals and had a pretty good performance all round. Yeah, he was good, and and Lewis has sort of come back into it over the last few games. He had a few games, which all young players do, where it went a little bit flat for him and his touch sort of eluded him and he was a little bit careless with his passing. But the last three games, he's been outstanding again. And like you say, he's had a, he's had a good um, part to play in both goals. You realise how much players you miss when you see them back on the pitch and Anthony Scully, fantastic finish. And we shouldn't forget, ran himself into the ground. He looked exhausted at the end. Yeah, he's, he's, got, he's a bundle of energy. You know, he, he's, he's got the ability. The things that I like about schools is that there'll, there'll be certain things in his game that, and I mean this with a great respect, you know, some fans don't see, you know, and won't see. The timer of his runs off the line are great, he gets into little pockets, but I suppose his biggest asset is to prepare to run away from the ball. And there's a lot of young players in the game at the minute that are not prepared to do that because they want to show that they're good players. So, schools has got that, it gives us an option in behind as well as in front of the team. So, um, yeah, and he, obviously he took his goal really well as well. Morgan Whitaker, I think, showed why you were so cheesed off when I spoke to you in September and, mm. and so happy when I spoke to you in December mm. when you've, you've sorted a deal out for him. Yeah, yeah, listen, his performance today says everything that, you know, everyone needs to know what he's about and what he can bring to us. We just want to add to that now, though. You know, like literally said to you before the game, well, I want to see two or three new faces within the next week or so if we can. And we're working really, really hard to make that happen. Obviously, clearly, we're going to have to bring a defender in as well. And... All of a sudden, if we do and we create a little bit of momentum, who knows? Who knows? But you know, let's let's enjoy this for a few hours, and then we've got to worry about dealing with the likes of Ross Stewart and these type of guys at Sunderland. Um, there's no doubt it was a red card, but do you think some of the decisions leading up to that red card maybe led oh, to it? In some don't ways? don't get me on referees, please, please don't get me on referees. Like, um, yeah, I mean, obviously the goal that they had disallowed the offside, clearly offside, but you know, I think. The referee admitted straight away as soon as he'd made the decision that he'd, he'd made a mess of it because the fourth official said that. But yeah, that would have been absolutely, you know, exactly where we've been supposed for the first half of the season if that would have, uh, you know, counted. But luckily it didn't and the correct decision happened. And, you know, we can talk about 
refereeing decisions on the back of a win rather than a defeat. Yeah, just, just to pursue it, there was a couple of physical challenges mm. and probably in your playing day mm. we wouldn't even talk about them mm. but perhaps nowadays they're sort of ones that we often see games pulled up for and it felt like it, it gave a momentum that led possibly to the challenge as well. Yeah, possibly, possibly, you know, and um, I think, you know, that's where obviously the refs got to sort of take control of the situation, you know, pull the two captains in, whatever it may be. Um, but I just think sometimes they make a rod for their own back, really, because they allow certain things to go and don't deal with it there and then. And then you've got a bit of an issue because you have players sort of similar to myself in, in my time where I'm thinking, all right, OK, I've got a free one here, so I'll, go, I'll, I'll make sure you uh, oblige and take the hit. We talked about the home form before the game. It's great to get the win and the fans are really with you for the match. No, the, the, listen, the fans are brilliant today. Like, you know, even... I said to the players at half-time that they're going to have a spell. They're going to put us under pressure because that's what they do. They're a good side and we've got to expect that and respect that. So even when that was happening, there wasn't, um, there wasn't an anxiety about the place. I didn't think there was today, you know, and I, I felt, you know, that they stuck with us. And even when we sort of give the ball away a little bit carelessly at times, they stuck with us, and which was great. And we're going to need that. We're going to need that going forward because we obviously we've got some sort of big games coming up but at home, but we've got to the big ones on Tuesday nights coming up as well that we need to take care of. Just on the signings, I know there are things imminent or you're like tomorrow or anything like that, but from now what you're saying, three or four, possibly a defender now and, and three, two to three front players? Yeah, I mean, that's the idea. You know, we're, we're trying really hard. Obviously, we're not in a position where we can splash the cast too much and go and compete with some of the, the top teams in the division. But we'll, what we can do is keep asking, keep pestering people and keep, um, keep on the front foot and try to get people in and you know, if one doesn't happen, we'll go to the next one. But we, we, you know, you look at the bench today. We've got, let's say, four outfield players. That's down to three now for Tuesday, with Lewis injury. So yeah, we need bodies. I'm um, just quick question about Sunderland. I don't know if you're aware of this, but I'm told there's a, been a bit of a COVID issue around Sunderland today. Have you are you aware of anything? Does it is it concerning? We are aware, but from what we're we're led to believe, I think it's more around the goalkeeping situation. Obviously, one of their young goalkeepers has had to play today. We watched the game beforehand and. Um, I think obviously if they get one more in that department then they might be in a bit of trouble but as it stands at the minute um, I don't see anything happening or anything changing on Tuesday but if it does you know we've had to deal with it you know so far so it won't be a problem. And then your opponents next Saturday I don't know if you've seen this they've won at St James's today and beat Newcastle one now. Have they really? All oh, right, brilliant fantastic no I didn't um, listen yeah I mean obviously we had a really good away day at Cambridge early on in the season and um, you know that's fantastic for, for Mark and the, and the football club, and we'll welcome with open arms when they come here next Saturday. But hopefully, we'll put in a similar sort of performance and make it as difficult as we possibly can for them.